Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio Detectives, where we bring to you tales from the greatest detective shows the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 50 episodes made, broadcast on NBC Radio from 1950 to 1951, we bring to you Dimension X. Adventures in Time and Space, transcribed in future tense. Dimension X. In the beginning, there was Jordan, thinking his lonely thoughts. Out of the loneliness came a longing. Out of the longing came a vision. Out of the dream came a planning. And out of the planning came decision. Jordan's hand was lifted, and the ship was born. You, look out! Are you all right? Yes, it missed me. What was it? A mutant with a slingshot. I think it dashed down that passageway. You want to go after it? We'd never catch it, Alan. It's probably 12 decks above us by now. I didn't think they ever came down this far. The trolls usually get them before they reach this level. Uh, they get more daring with each generation. This one looked like a female. Male or female, it might have killed us. I told you this trip was pure foolishness. Climbing 24 deck levels to hear a crazy old man rave. We're almost there now. Compartment X-15, level 24. This is the place. This area smells as if it hadn't been visited by a sanitation crew for generations. Part of the ship is almost deserted. Yes? This is the compartment of John the Witness. Who are you? My name is Hugh Hoyland. I'm a cadet from the scientist barracks. This is my friend, Alan Mahoney. What do you want of John the Witness? Only to talk. Are you a believer in Jordan? Naturally. I have heard that there are those among the younger scientists who doubt the word of Jordan. To doubt is death. We're not heretics. Oh. Enter. I have brought a gift of tobacco, grown on the richest level. It smells good. I assure you it's the best. Wait here. What a rat's nest. What the devil do you think he can tell you? I don't know. Now hush. Well? You are John the Witness? I am. Good eating to you. I am Hugh Hoyland. This is my friend, Alan Mahoney. So what brings a gentleman of the scientist class to my humble apartment? I have heard that you and your parents before you have long been keepers of the legend of the ship. Since Jordan gave the word. I am anxious to hear the word as Jordan spoke it. Why? You see, among the young scientists, there have been some who talk against the word. The regulations against such heresy? Some of them say the ship has no purpose. They say... They say that... We're here accidentally. That, that we have no more grace in Jordan's eyes than the most deformed mutant who dwells in the highest level of the ship. What shall I say to you? I wish to hear the word from the mouth of one who knows. That I may become more convinced. Sir, you have gift for the witness? The finest tobacco. Good. I will dim the light. Now, pay close attention, for these are the words as my father's father's father gave them to his son's son's son. This is how the ship came into being, how our people were created. In the beginning, there was only Jordan, thinking his lonely thoughts. In the beginning, there was darkness, formless and dead. Out of the loneliness came a longing. Out of the longing came a vision. 
out of the dream came a planning, and out of the planning came decision. Jordan's hand was lifted, and the ship was born. Mile after mile of good compartments, tank after tank for golden corn, ladder and passage, door and locker, fit for the needs of the yet unborn. He looked on his work and found it pleasing, meet for a race that was yet to be. He thought of man, and man came into being. Then Jordan checked his thought and searched for a key. Man untamed would shame his maker. Man unruled would spoil the plan. So Jordan made the regulations, some to speak and some to listen. Order came to the ranks of men. Crew he created to work at their stations, scientists to guide the plan. Over them all he created captain, made him judge of the race of man. Thus it was in the golden age. These are the true words? As my father's father taught them. But what of the strange beast-like people on the upper levels of the ship? Surely Jordan did not create them. Jordan is perfect. All below him lack perfection. You have heard of the legend of Huff? I have heard that he mutinied against Jordan. Darkness swallowed the ways of virtue. Sin prevailed upon the ship. And before wisdom prevailed and the bodies of Huff and his followers were fed into the converter, some of the rebels escaped and lived to father the mutants. They are tainted with the sins of their fathers. One more question, witness. Speak. What is the ship? The ship is a great sphere, 25 kilometers wide and 100 levels deep. I know that, but what about the upper levels? The regulations forbid us to venture into the upper levels, but it is said that beyond the levels of the mutants lies the forbidden place where Jordan's spirit prevails. Uh, so I've heard. But something troubles me. Something which prompted my coming here. Yes, my son. What lies beyond the ship? What? What lies beyond the ship? This is heresy. Answer me. I will not permit such talk. The ship is complete. The ship is universal. The ship is everywhere. The ship is everywhere. Ah, your mutterings are those of a frightened old man. They answer nothing. You question the word? I think you lie. Hear me, Mr. Highland. For what you have already said, I can have your body fed to the converter. Your soul launched on the endless trip. You threaten me. You, for Jordan's sake. You think I fear this dried fig of a man? You. Sir, my friend is impetuous. He doesn't understand. I might be persuaded to forget a substantial gift. You pig. You. Come on, Alan. The sight of this so-called holy man offends me. No, you shall not leave. Mark, don't try to frighten me with a gun, old man. Remain where you are, heretic. I warn you, put down the gun. No. No closer. Drop it. Very well, then. Dip to the heretic. Alan, get him. Is he dead? I don't know. Come on, Hugh. We've got to get out of here. Now, where? We can't go back. They'd feed us into the converter. What's that? The old woman must have turned in an alarm. Come on, the patrol will be here in no time. Where can we go? The upper levels. But the mutant. We'll have to take our chance. Listen. That's the patrol we've got to climb. There's a hatchway. Down the corridor. Quickly. Oh! The ladder. You wait. How far are we from the outside wall? Judging by the slope of the deck, about two miles. Mutant territory. Come on, we'll try this passageway. You. What? I don't know. I feel as if we're being watched. Oh, it's your imagination. Perhaps not. Oh! It's only a shadow. 
chips, Rack. Get a grip on yourself. This is as big as a dog. Come on. I can't drag myself much further. We've got to find a compartment with water. Oh, if only you hadn't asked him that stupid question. There's no use going over that. Why did you do it? Why? Alan, I've been thinking about it for a long time. And when he began to give me those stupid pat answers, well, I just saw red, I guess. But who are you to question the ways of Jordan? When you asked me to go with you to visit the witness, I thought you wanted spiritual help. I never dreamed I'm that sorry, you... Alan. I couldn't foresee this. I didn't know. It... Wait. Wait a minute. Now oh, what? Another ship rat? No. I thought I saw something move near that bulkhead. I didn't see anything. Maybe my eyes are going bad still. <laughs> you man! Alan, look out! <laughs> Where, where am I? <laughs> what are you? Get away from me. Alan! Alan! <laughs> Look out for that knife. Stay away from me. Alan! Alan! Don't kill him, Bobo. Not yet. <gasps> Who are you? Must forgive my friend Bobo. Like so many of my people, he's rather impetuous where members of the so-called super race are concerned. Who are you? What place is this? As you can guess from my leg, I'm a mutant. Where is Alan? Your friend is dead. I oh. was not able to restrain my people in time to save him. Why don't you destroy me and get it over with? We do not kill for pleasure, Mr. Hoyland. Only when necessary. You know my name? I read your identification tag. Who are you? Mutants can't read. My name is Gregory. I'm a leader of my people. Although we are unfortunate in our heredity, Mr. Hoyland, many of us are quite intelligent. Why do you live like animals? We would rather live like free animals than like regimented slaves, as you do. I've heard that you practice cannibalism. Undoubtedly, you hear many things about us. We raise our own cattle on the upper levels, and those of our people who choose to farm raise enough crops for our small population. You turn your head. Why? This one. I've never seen a creature like him. Bobo is an unfortunate. He was born without the power of speech. How can you tolerate a monstrosity? We have learned to live with difference. If we began to destroy our imperfects as you do on the lower levels, there would soon be no one left. This violates the regulations. The word of Jordan's You know, Mr. Hoyland, your people are really primitive and barbaric. You dare say that to me? I dare say a good deal more. Let us go to my compartment and speak further. I'm always interested in information of the lower levels. I won't give you any information. Bobo, I want Mr. Hoyland in my cabin, please. Hey. Hey. I advise you to go quietly, Mr. Hoyland. Bobo has a hatred of superior beings, which is unfortunate, but quite understandable. Proceed. <laughs> Enter, Mr. Hoyland. This is where you live? Yes. But you have books. Stolen from your libraries, Mr. Hoyland. Compton's Astrophysics. The Philosophy of Interstellar Navigation. Celestial Mechanics. You have read these? Um, most of them. Why did you bring me here? What do you intend to do? Do you believe in Jordan, Mr. Hoyland? There is no other belief. And the trip? I suppose you believe in the trip, too. Well, what else is there to believe? When you die, your remains are fed to the converter, and your soul makes the trip. And where does the trip take you? Why, to Centaurus, of course. Huh? And where or what is Centaurus? Why, Centaurus... Mind you, I'm just telling you the orthodox answer... Centaurus is where you arrive when you've made the trip. A place where everything is happy and everybody's happy and there's always good eating. It's mythological, of course. And you believe this? 
The peasants believe it, literally, but many of the younger scientists like myself know that it's figurative, symbolic. Why do you ask? Didn't it ever occur to you, Mr. Holland, that the trip is exactly what your peasants believe it is? That the ship and all the crew were actually going someplace? Moving? The ship can't go anywhere. It already is everywhere. Imagine a place bigger than the ship, much bigger, with the ship inside it, moving inside. But there can't be any place bigger than the ship. There wouldn't be any place for it to be. Oh, for half sake. Listen, you know the lowest level? Yes. If you started digging a hole in the lowest level, where would that hole go? Where would that hole... Oh, no. No, it's forbidden to think such a thought. Where would it go? No. No, I can't think about it. Bobo. Bobo, we're going to take Mr. Hoyland to the place. Where are we going? To the top level. But it's certain death. Nonsense. I've been there a thousand times. Come along. No, I won't. You can't make me. I think we can. Now, shall we proceed peacefully, or shall I have Bobo persuade you? <laughs> Open the door, Bobo. Inside. What place is this? This, Mr. Hoyland, is the main control room. Why, Mr. Hoyland, you're trembling. It isn't true. There is no such place except in mythology. Oh, you younger men are so wise, Mr. Hoyland, except for one thing. This happens to be the main control room of the ship. But it, it, it's nothing but a huge room with an instrument panel. What did you expect? How do you know this is the main control room? See these instruments? Using them, the navigator many hundreds of years ago actually steered the ship on its voyage. I don't understand. I didn't suppose you would. Your people have been so steeped in superstition and ignorance that the whole concept has lost its meaning. Sit in that chair. Don't be frightened. Sit down. Very well. Look up. What do you see? Nothing but a huge shield. Watch it for one moment, Mr. Hoyland. You are going to see something that few of us have ever been privileged to witness. Something so dazzling that you may find it hard to accept at first. But it is there. It is a reality. And ultimately, you must accept it. What are you doing? I'm dimming the lights. Don't be frightened. Keep your eyes focused on the shield above us. Ready? Watch. The shield! It's sliding back! Ghost of George! Well? What am I seeing? The universe, Mr. Harlan. The universe, in all its beauty. The stars, the planets, the suns, the moon, and the constellations. This is your heritage, Mr. Hoyland. The heritage you've been too stupid to see. But it can't be. The ship is the universe. There is nothing but the ship. Ah, oh, but there it is. You see it before your eyes, spread out like a canopy of glory. Do you still deny it? Answer me, Mr. Hoyland. Do you deny it? No. No, I can't. They lied. They lied. Why did you close the shield? You will see it again if you're not afraid. I'm not afraid. Many times. I have shown this to others of your people whom we captured, and though they saw it before their very eyes, they would not believe it. Tell me about it. Tell me about the ship, about the universe. What are these things? How did this come about? Many thousands of years ago, on a planet like those you've just seen, a planet called Earth, 
A scientist named Jordan decided to build a ship that would carry men from one planet to another. For many years, Jordan and thousands of others studied and planned. And when they were finished, they built the ship. A ship so large that it had to be assembled in its own orbit beyond the place called the moon. Sixty years it took them to construct. And when it was finished, a whole new science had been conceived. Then the trip was begun. The trip that was to land a colony of Earthmen on a far-off planet called Centaurus. Millions of light years beyond the furthest planet ever reached before. How do you know these things? Among my books are the log which Jordan himself kept and the records of the journey for the first 40 years. What happened? There was a mutiny. A man named Huff led a rebellion of those who wanted to turn back. In the struggle, the navigators were killed and the crew fell into a state of anarchy. In the years to follow, small groups of men tried to organize the ship for navigation and each time they failed. Finally, the whole idea was abandoned. And so for centuries, we have swung in space, unmanned, undirected, living in a lost world of our own making, without purpose, without direction. Why have you told me this? Why have you brought me here? You could have killed me. Can you guess? No. No, I can't. Unless... It would be too fantastic. Well, you want to finish the trip. Yes, that's it. What would it take to do it? A miracle, almost. The crew would have to be trained. Many people, each skilled in a certain duty. Couldn't you train your own people? We are too few. Besides, the main drivers in the lower levels where my people are forbidden to go. No. It would mean that both our peoples would have to work together. Our differences encouraged rather than denied. It can be done. You showed me. You can show others. I can show them. Can you? I'll see the captain himself. I have an uncle on the central board. I'll tell him what I've seen here. And do you think he'll believe you? Send one of your people with me. That's asking a good deal. I'm risking a good deal by going back. Very well. Bobo will go with you. He can't talk. There will be no need for talk. I will write a message guaranteeing safe conduct for a group of unarmed scientists to visit the main control room. Bobo will take you safely through our territory. What happens when you reach your own level is up to you. One moment. Yes, what do you... You... Quick, Uncle Edison. But... This mutant... He's harmless, please. Now, what is this? You're wanted I know for... all about that. Listen, Uncle, I must see the captain. The captain? Are you mad? You're a council member. You can get me to see him. They'll kill you. You're wanted for heresy. I don't care. I must speak with the captain. You're close to him. You can arrange it. I don't understand why... Uncle, I... listen to me. The ship is moving. I can prove it. Do you understand there is a purpose in the ship? I don't understand what you're babbling Never about. Never mind. Just talk to the captain. Tell him I have information of tremendous importance. Tell him I've arranged a truce with the mutants. A truce? Here, show him this paper signed by their leader. Do it, Uncle, for my sake. I don't know. Please, I... Uncle. If I'm to die, let this be my last request to you. Very well. I'll speak to the captain. I'll try. <laughs> You see, Mr. Hoyland, that you saw this with your own eyes. I swear it, Captain. I swear it on the word of Jordan. Let me see that paper again. Hmm. What do you think, Commander Erst? I don't know, sir. It might be a trick. I guarantee you safe conduct. If these things are as Mr. Hoyland reports them, it would pay to risk a few lives. The man is a convicted heretic. Still, we mustn't discount his word entirely. He has a safe conduct. The mutant risked its life coming with him. I think we might investigate. You will do it. I'll have an expedition outfitted. Dismiss, Mr. Orlin. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
Captain. Do you... Commander Earth. Sir. You'll make the necessary arrangements for an expedition. I trust you understand. Perfectly, sir. Perfectly. Lieutenant. Mr. Hoyland. You'd better watch your men here. This is the spot. Patrol, halt. I see no welcoming party of mutants. There will be none. Their leader will meet you inside the main control room. You don't say. And just where is this main control room? Beyond that door. I see. All right, men. Ready arms. Why do you ready arms? In case of ambush. Ambush? Don't you think they could have ambushed you on the way up here a good deal more easily? You you? know, Mr. Hoyland, I think you're a muty lover. They have a place in the converter for that kind. Lieutenant, are you mad? No, Mr. Hoyland. But most certainly you are think that we could be lured up here to be slaughtered with a fantastic story about some mythical control room. Guns ready, sir. Lieutenant, I warn you, these people have acted in good faith. If you break all the no. you to open the control room, Mr. Harlan. No, not until those guns are dismounted. As leader of this expedition, I order you to call them. I refuse. You cannot do this thing. This is no way to keep a truce. Very well, if you refuse. Oh, there. Mutant. Come out. For Jordan's sake, Lieutenant. I'm too quiet for comfort. Mutant, open the door. Please, Jordan, don't let anything happen. Please don't. It's opening. Ready, men. Someone's coming out. Look at his leg. Horrible. Steady. He's walking toward us. I can't stand this. Look out. Gregory. No. You fools, you've killed him. Here come the rest of them. Fire. 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 Should teach them a lesson they won't forget. All right, men, inside the room. Orlin, you're under arrest as a conspirator in this ambush. Ambush, you fool, you blind, stupid fool. That'll be enough. Have you been inside this place before? Yes. What's all this machinery? These are the controls he would have used to steer the ship. He's gone out of his mind, Lieutenant. Steer the ship? Who? The leader. The one you killed. This ugly mutant? This ugly mutant happened to be a man of true greatness. You're mad. Am I? This man had a vision which could have saved you, but you chose to kill him because you couldn't stand the sight of his difference from you. I'll not listen to these ravings. Close your ears. Shut your minds against the conscience that tells you it's wrong to kill. That tells you that your need to be arrogant only proves your inadequacy to yourself. Shut him up. Don't listen to him, man. You can't shut your ears. My words sting you. You cannot shut your mind, and you cannot shut your shut eyes. Him. Don't do this. The roof, it's moving back. Look, let the vision of this confound your ignorance and blind your eyes. This is the heresy you tried to stifle in your own breast. This is the heritage of stars. And open skies for which men have yearned for centuries. Try to destroy this, and you will only destroy yourselves. Death to the heretic. Kill me if you choose. But I say to you that this you cannot keep from our people. That they will seek it out, and the ship will be manned, and the ship will be steered. And there will be freedom and purpose and respect for ourselves. This is your heritage. Look upon the universe. Kill him! Kill him! You have just heard another adventure into the unknown world of the future. The world of... Dimension X. Today, Dimension X has transcribed 
Universe, written for radio by George Lefferts and based on a story by Robert Heinlein. Featured in the cast were Mason Adams as Hugh and Peter Capel as Gregory. Your host was Norman Rose. Music by Bert Berman. Engineer Bill Chambers. Sound created by Manny Siegel, Max Russell, and Wes Conant. Dimension X is produced by William Welch and directed by Edward King. Ed Archie Gardner tangles with Tallulah Bankhead on The Big Show. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.